Hello, my name is Jenny Gardner. I'm an academic coach here at SNHU. Welcome to this guide on polynomials. We're going to begin with definitions or need to know info and then move into examples. Factoring polynomials. First, we're going to talk about a polynomial and what it is. All polynomials are going to have variables and coefficient. Coefficients are the numbers that are being multiplied to the variables. And the variables themselves are letters that represent some sort of value. So when you see a problem like x squared minus 3x plus 5, the negative 3 in the middle and the 5 are number values. And there is an invisible 1 in front of the x squared. Any of the numbers that are in front of a letter are the coefficients. They are going to be multiplied to the variables next to them. There are different types of polynomials. When you have a monomial, that means there's only one variable involved. So if it was something like 3x plus 2x, we see that the levels are both x's and they can be combined when we combine like terms. And so this would equal 5x, which would end up being a monomial. It's still a polynomial, but it just has one term involved. So that is a monomial. Then there are binomials. That would be something like 3x to the third minus 3x squared because it has two different terms. It has an x to the third power term and an x squared term. So it has two different x terms and therefore they can't be combined together and this is a binomial. And continuing with that, a trinomial would involve three terms. Three terms such as 2x squared minus 4x plus 10. None of those can be combined together because they all have different terms. There is no x term with the 10. There is one x with the negative 4, and there is an x squared with the 2. So each of those have a different term, and there are three of them involved in this polynomial. So this is a trinomial. So just remember, coefficient is the number that is in front of or being multiplied to the term. So in this case, if we recall, the 52 is the coefficient, whereas the variable is the x squared. Now, when you have a polynomial, you can graph it to gather some information. You can look at it and factor it out in order to figure out what the x values are going to be. There's a ton of different things you can do with polynomials. Today, we're going to talk about factoring polynomials. There's a bunch of different methods, but we're going to try out the AC method and grouping. So the setup of any polynomial kind of involves this AX squared plus BX plus C. Now, if you have a longer equation that has an x to the third term and different things like that, you'll have a different setup because you'll have more terms involved. But for a quadratic, which is what this is called, or a trinomial here, in this particular trinomial, we have ax squared plus bx plus c. a, b, and c are all representing coefficients, they're all representing those numbers. Whereas we have the x variable, we have a term with one x and we have a term with an x squared. I have an example below. 
couple examples below, and we're going to look at them and see what are A, B, and C here. So we'll see what A equals, B equals, and C equals for both of these. Now this is a good time to pause and figure out what, a, what you think A, B, and C are going to be, and then come back and check and see if you were correct. In this first example, A is going to be 6, B is going to be 15, and C is going to be 49. Notice I didn't include the X's. The coefficients A, B, and C are just the numbers. On the right-hand side equation, we have to make sure to include the negatives. So we have a negative 1, a negative 4, and we have 21. And 21 is positive because it did not have a subtraction symbol before it. So think about how you did. Is this something you need to brush up on? Definitely look for further resources if this is something that you're struggling with. All right, let's continue on and try out a full example. So now we're going to use the AC method in action. So the reason it's called the AC method is it's going to use A and C from the ABC coefficients. So remember that we knew that A was negative 1, B was negative 4, and C was 21. We know that. We did that on the last page. So we've recalled that. We've done the first step. Our next step was to find A times C. The AC method involves multiplying A times C. So we will find that A times C is going to be negative 1 times 21, which should give us negative 21. That's the first step of the AC method to figure out what A times C is. So we figured that out. Now we're going to list all the factors of A times C, meaning of negative 21. So if we have negative 21, we're going to list everything that can multiply to negative 21, all the pairs. So negative 21 could be negative 7 times 3. It could be negative 3 times 7. It could be 21 times 1, negative 1, and it could be negative 21 times a positive 1. We have to list out all of those because we need to know every factor in order to figure out the next part. So this is everything that 21 can break down to. Now, if you're having trouble with your numbers, that's okay. It's totally okay for you to go to this, list what you know, try the next step, and then if you have to backtrack and try again, that's okay too. It's totally fine if you miss one on the first try and need to go back and try again. So now we're going to look and see which factors add to equal B. So B is negative 4, if we look up here. B was negative 4. And we're going to look at all of these factors that we listed out and decide, well, which two of these are going to add up and equal negative 4. Let's start at the bottom. So negative 21 plus 1 is a negative 20. 21 plus a negative 1 is a positive 20. Negative 3 plus 7 is a positive 4. And negative 7 plus 3 is a negative 4. So we have figured out that the pair that we need is negative 7 and 4. I'm sorry, negative 7 and 3, because negative 7 plus 3 equals B, our negative 4. So we now know this information. We need this as we continue on. But we have found the two factors that added to B. Okay, so we found that B, which was negative 4, is the same as negative 7 plus 3. Okay? We have to remember that. 
This is the starting place for factoring our polynomial. And I listed out the steps here in case you need to review them. You can pause this and review the steps we just did here and see that we listed all the factors. And then we found that negative seven plus three is the one that equals negative four. This is our starting place for factoring the polynomial. We're going to replace our B with our new numbers. All right. Okay, so this was our B right here. The negative 4x, the negative 4 being our B. We're going to replace that negative 4. Now I've done it just below. I've replaced it here. And our negative 4x became negative 7x plus 3x because we know that negative 4 is the same as negative 7 plus 3. And since we found the factors that will work, we can replace them in order to be able to continue on with factoring this polynomial. So the whole reason we did all those other steps was to replace this right now. So we've replaced our negative 4x with a negative 7x plus 3x. This allows us to now try grouping. Grouping lets us use parentheses around each side of the polynomial in order to find the like terms, all about those like terms, all about the things that they can have in common and we can pull out. So looking at this, what we do is we put parentheses around negative x squared minus 7x and we put a parentheses around 3x plus 21. If you do it in the opposite order and you have the negative 7x on the right and the 3x on the left, it'll still work. It's just going to have different commonalities, but it'll still work and you'll still get the same solution. So no matter which side you put it on, it will work out. So looking at this, if we have negative x squared minus 7x, we see that they both have a negative common and an x in common. They don't both have sevens and they both only have one x. So the only things that we can pull out are a negative and an x. This is sort of like reversing distribution. You're pulling it back out instead of putting it in. We have to pull the negative x out from both sides. So if we pull a negative x out from negative x squared, what's left? This is a good time to pause and think about it again. All that's going to be left out of negative x squared when we pull out a negative x is just one x. And you can check that by checking to see is negative x times x negative x squared? And it is. On the right hand side, we have a negative 7x. Okay, and we're pulling out a negative x. Well, all that's going to be left is the 7 a positive 7 because we pulled out the negative and we pulled out the x. So, so far this is what we have and you can see I put that down here in our equation. Well now we have to do the other side. The other side was 3x plus 21. Hmm. There's no negatives to pull out on both, there's no x's to pull out on both, but what can we pull out? Thinking about this, both of them can be divided by three, so we can pull out a three. The inside of our parentheses on this one should match the inside of the parentheses on the other one. And if we pull out of three, it will. It's going to be x plus seven. Three times x is three x, and three times seven is 21. So we now have figured out the terms that made things in common. And that gives us our final two factored terms for the polynomial. The first term is inside of the parentheses, x plus 7. The second term is what's left over outside of the parentheses, and that was a negative x that we pulled out and a positive 3, negative x plus 3. So looking at this, we have x plus 7 and negative x plus 3, and that is our factored polynomial. From there, we can solve for x. If we set this equal to 0, 
we have x plus 7 equals 0, and we have negative x plus 3 equals 0. And if you solve this, you'll see that x is a negative 7 and x is a positive 3. Now, if you graphed it, you would see y. You would understand the reason that x is negative 7 and x equals 3. It hits the x line twice because this is a parabola. So if you graph this original equation, try it out and see if you can see where x is negative 7 and x is 3 and how we are correct in our solution. Congratulations. You have made it through polynomials. Thank you for coming today. We discussed polynomials with some examples along the way. Thanks again for watching the Academic Supports Guide on Polynomials, and please read the video description for further resources. Have a wonderful day.